appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 48. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, a legend in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, man. It's your boy, man. No, I hate that it's your boy, man, because I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's <laughs> South Philadelphia's number one man. You know what I'm saying? Task on project, born and raised, man. Gorilla Fortune of Building. Yeah, for Start sure, off for before, sure. before we even go through the rundown, bro. Appreciate you coming on. I'm trying to make this one happen for a minute. You already know, um, bro. All right, now let's go through the rundown. Follow the clothing line at Custom Hustle Jerseys, at Custom Hustle Jerseys on Instagram. Also, we now got the jackets. The custom jackets is in now. Custom jackets is in now. You design the whole situation in and out of the country, in and out of the city. We can get it there for you. Pay for your shipping and handling outside of the city, but you know it's worth it. H2H Cleaning. That's my cleaning company. You follow H2H Cleaning. That's a tri-state area situation. But like I always tell you, if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Now, uh, y'all already know we're doing a live show. February 20th. February 20th at the barn. 4901 Catherine. February 20th, 6 p.m. Tickets is on sale now. You either get with me or you hit the link in my bio. Uh, Looking to have a beautiful turnout. Shout out to all my sponsors on the situation. The Senate Candle. Uh... We got Cloud 10 Treats, and we got Khadija's uh, Soul Food. They will all be in the building. They will all be vending the different situations on February the 20th at the live show at the barn. Come through and fuck with me at the barn. Now let's go through the rundown of the stations. <laughs> all right, Mondays, we got the E-Block Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Monday on the E-Block Radio Network. Then we GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock on Tuesdays. Then we Wednesdays is the kickback at 8 a.m. and p.m. Central Standard Time. Thursdays, we at WTNUPhilly.com. That's 1230. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. The THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. We got something for Sunday, y'all. It made it happen, but until we get the official situation, we make no announcements. All right, episode 48. My man, Cree Forch is in the building. Yes, sir. This is a Philly legend, and this is a Philly situation that we are going to touch right now. If you've been locked in with the podcast for a long time, you know somewhere around episode four or five, I did an episode about we had 498, I believe, murders in the city last year for 2020. 2021, we're closing it out right now. As of yesterday's date, this was 556 is That's where we was at. Crazy, this year. Yo. Damn. So the topic that we're going to touch in right now, y'all already know what it is. The podcast drive through is this is not just a Philly situation because the shit is happening everywhere, but it's real bad mm-hmm. here right now at the moment. Where do we go from here? How the fuck did we get here? How the fuck do we get out of here? Basically is what we need to know. How do we get out of here? Portrait man, we start with the guests. Oh man, I, don't, I ain't even know the numbers because I don't really, I don't watch the news or none of that. You know what I'm saying? I just, I see. I specifically needed the, I specifically needed the number. Just yeah, so we can see what's the difference I ain't in now and crazy then. like that. I knew we hit five. <laughs> I knew we hit five, but I ain't. I ain't know it was that deep. We dead ass six. You know what I'm saying? That's Man. that's bad, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? It's it's sad. You know what I mean? And to be honest, I don't really, I don't really know what, if it is a solution. You know what I'm saying? I really don't. I really don't know because they've been looking for a solution for like the last what? You know what I'm saying? In Philly they forever. Always, yeah, they always been talking about, you know, we need to get out here. A lot, you know, a lot of people be calling out. We need the men to step up. We need to this, we this. It's men that's really on the front line for it. Real men that's on the front line for it. And it ain't no, it ain't nothing changed the outcome or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they can stop screaming that. You know what I'm saying? They always saying, you know, we need real men to come to the forefront to get get these youngers to go talk on the corner instead of third. I know old heads. First and foremost, I'm one of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely considered an old head now. You know what I'm saying, I'm one of them that try to stick my, you know, stick my arm in and try to, you know, get to the bottom or something or try to, you know, find a solution and maybe could possibly stop it. You know what I'm saying, you know, with my neighborhood going through a lot of things. I'm pretty sure you probably heard about it. You know what I'm saying, you know, my neighborhood go through a lot and I tried to reach. You know what I'm saying, I tried to reach and no. You know what I'm saying, like some hey, of them hey, situations. Hey. 
it'd be like this shit is just too far at this point. Yeah, um, yeah a lot I just of was looking, too far. I, I just was looking it up. That was episode five. Shout out to Kenyatta Bay. Shout out to Yacht. Episode five, we talked about the same thing. Episode six was with my nephew, um, one of the Young Flames. We talked about getting the kid perspective on, like, what it is that they see and they hear when we talk to them and we try yeah. to show them shit. Uh, one of the things that nephew threw at me, though, shout out to Mayor, um, he said, like, just take the time to talk to him. If you see, like, the young boy is, young boy, Juma, every week is selling chips when he ain't, when he out in school now, because in the summertime, he's there every week, but now, obviously, with the school situation, but he always selling the chips and the candy. Since he told me, he said, when we be doing little hustles like that, we washing cars and we doing anything like that, something positive, we need y'all to support that to make us stay on that. Because he like, people will always tell you about you need to do this positive and that positive, but then at the same time, they won't support it when you're doing it. Yeah, that's true. So that's I'm true. like, every time I see young boy, whatever ones I got, two, three dollars, yo, give me some chips and a Twix or whatever it is. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Just because I always try to keep it in my mind. And that was something like that said, the nephew told me, uh, this is one thing like talking to my man, like this was my young boy since forever. And he was always like, you never invited me to no dumb shit. He said, this is why I always fuck with you. He was like, plenty of niggas would be like, yeah, that's your old head. That's your old head. But they always telling you some stupid shit. And I'm like, if you see a kid and know that that lane ain't him, why would you be putting him in that lane? Right, right. Like, you can't get everybody at this point. Like I said, shit, that's damn near a thousand that we didn't hit. Well, that's over a thousand that we didn't hit in two years. Two years. So it's like two years is over a stack, and that's just the number for now. That was the number for yesterday. God knows what the hell happened today. Right. The news won't come on at 12, 10, 5, 11, and all that, and it's gonna be eight more joints that you won't be like, what the fuck? You know, you know something I did see too. Not only is it on, not only is it 550 murders, it's more women that got killed now than ever. You know what I'm women saying? and children, yeah. I seen the numbers not, not too long ago. They had put the numbers up of the females that got shot, you know what I'm saying, or murdered. And that joint crazy, bro. It was like, I think it was like two something or something like that. Like, and like if I don't you, even, how do you even explain that? Like, if you take it to like what you just said there, if we just talking shootings, we over 1,500. These is bodies like yeah. this is 556 bodies now you just talking shot and yeah we talking the women and children the numbers for the women and children is astronomically high like this shit is on it's past turkey time like because Crazy, one thing that everybody always respected was the women and children like i will never forget these two joints that stuck out to me and these was both from last year you had a dude that ran on his pregnant girl he peeps that these niggas got the drop on him off the one thing that everybody knows in this situation is, damn, you got me because I'm laying over top of her, is one thing that can't happen is the baby can't go. So she's connected with the baby. That means she's off limits. That means you got to eat whatever that is and take that as a man. But the problem is these niggas ain't even men. These niggas are just males. They just, they ain't even, you just a male if you got a dick. It's pretty much how that works. It doesn't make you a man, but doing shit like that is a problem. Doing shit like the little girls is playing on the step. The little girl was like five. It's her birthday. It's her and two little girls from her block. As humble as you can be for a birthday party. She gets shot in the chest. Like, kids can't even play on the step without niggas used to see, oh, yo, it's kid, it kids be around there. We ain't going to Oh, I just was shit. talking to somebody about that, <laughs> man. Like, you don't even see kids playing no more, bro. Like, you ride, like, I rode through my neighborhood not too long ago, man. Rode through the park. It was a nice day, too. It wasn't a kid in sight. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I don't remember that. Like, I don't, you know, when we was young, we always was in the park. We always was out in the community. We always was ripping and running. You don't even see kids. It may it actually make me it actually make me smile now if I ride past a block and see some kids playing football and see some girls out there, you know, running from the boys. That make me smile because that's rare now. My daughter don't even know how to jump rope. It's crazy, man. Like my daughter, we lived on the same block eight years. My daughter don't know one kid ever out there. Hey, like, bro, you know what, man? You know what my daughter said to me the day when I came home, bro. She said, "I don't even this one, Lord. It's crazy. We talked about that. She just said, "I don't even go outside, Dad." She said, "I don't even like." She said, "I used to sit outside out front." She said, "But I don't even like sitting on the step no more because cars be riding by looking creepy." 
Like, and the sad damn, part is that like, the ba- that the babies be on that type. Of you shit. know what I'm saying? She nine years old, but she peeping weird vibes and all that. Like, come on, man! Like, that's bad, man. Your daughter nine, mine is eight. When yeah. George Floyd shit happens and all of that with the rallies and all of that, I made her watch this stuff. Because yeah. my mom and my dad was the mom and dad who roots. Once upon a time, we was colored Rosewood, all of that shit. They made us watch it, so it was like put an importance on history and the shit that happens and everybody ain't like this, but you need to be aware that some people is like this. So fast forward to now and it's me. All right, look, you need to sit here and watch some of this just to get a gauge of what the hell is going on. Right. And she was like two, three days in a row, we, I make her watch it. And she like, so like people are just going to keep getting killed every day. Like pretty much. Yeah. It's like no reason to sugarcoat this. There's no reason to pass a fire in that situation. There's no reason to tell her that the world is made of bubble gums and kittens because it ain't. And it's like, it'd be harsh to kind of break that glass for him, but it's like, you need to break that glass. Like, yeah, I'd rather daughter, know, I'd rather know than not know. I'm saying, I'd rather, yeah, telling my daughter earlier, take these headphones out. We walking down the street, we, you need to be head on a swivel and paying attention. Like, I'm gonna try to catch as much of this as I can, but you it's know, some sad. shit you just can't see. It's sad that they gotta be exposed to that this early and learn and you know have to learn them type of things and learn survival tactics and all that because they really shouldn't be worrying about that as kids but the times we're living in now it's very important that you educate your kids on what's going on out this job man. The, the difference in them situations is we was aware of it too as kids but we just knew that meant you don't go down that block yeah. you don't go over there because people had enough respect for the situation that yo it's 7, 7.30, the kids is going to school. Nothing dumb is happening right now. At this time, it would be like, if something happened back when I was a kid in them times, it was like, oh, he earned that. Because in order for you to do that, everybody's about to come get with you. Because, yo, what are you doing? The kids is going to school. Now, niggas is doing drive-bys at at, at the high school. Like, this shit is unreal. Like, niggas ain't got no picks. Niggas ain't got no rules and no regulation. Did you see the the John... um... When they were shooting outside of school, it was like a fight at the school. Somebody pulled out, started shooting, and a little girl was running for cover and got hit by the car. Did you see that, John, bro? No, nah, I thought you was. This is the bad. This is how bad this shit is, though, bro. We talking about two totally different situations that happened in schools. This is how bad the city then got is where that you can't was so sad, which one. Bro. I thought you was about to talk about the, the man who was riding past and they started dumping outside the school and caught one no, in his head. They start shooting at the school and they. Somebody doorbell camera caught the little girl running. When they start shooting, you seen her, she panicked and ain't know what to do. And then she went to run across the street, I guess, to a house. Mm-hmm. And a car, the car came flying past, like, trying, I guess, I don't know if it was involved or they was just trying to get out of die, but they creamed up, bro. I mean, it's that jaw so sad, bro. That was the saddest yeah, I one. I seen the one, seen, bro. I seen the one when the ring camera with the little boy got hit, but the mom was like walking across the street. She wasn't holding his hand. And oh, the yeah, young boy yeah, like yeah. fly past. That's, yeah, what, I'm saying. This shit that, is so, that's yeah. what I'm saying. This is how bad this shit is. You describe one scene and you can go to 12 different stories that all yeah. sound the same. That's and it'd be like, that one, that one was out Southwest. Uh, that one was out North. That one was down South Philly. Like you can't keep track of this shit. This is how bad this yeah. shit is. But like, it's really bad. Like it's really, it's a, uh, like I hear the uh, the imam, he he said one time, he like it's chaotic. He's like it's chaos everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And that's the best word that describe what's going on. If you wanted to describe it, it's chaotic. Like you know what I'm saying, like it's really. I don't understand these new streets. Like that's what I see. Like these new streets, bro. Like I don't know these Jones, bro, at all. Like it's not nothing like we like what we learned and what we came up in. I don't nothing look familiar to me, bro. Niggas call the cops and be strapped. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't... <laughs> that hey, listen, man. Though. It's Stone Cold Rats running around with four or five bodies. You know what I'm saying? And, and niggas is letting them because they smoke shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they get off and everybody know they work, niggas letting them... Niggas let it, let, it, let it slide because they do that. But they Stone Cold Rats. You know what I mean? But it's like it's lawless now. There's no rules. Like, don't nobody respect it. Like, you could be a rat as long as you smoke shit. Like that's how these. That's how I feel. Like that's how I look at it. How these young girls carrying it. Yeah, they would justify the shit out of something. Just piece yeah, by like case. Real you know what I'm saying like a lot of these young boys is really 
they getting busy, but they dirty. Like a lot of these young boys and they told on shit and got niggas wills and all that, and they still out here acting crazy and niggas is letting it slide. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's just bad. Like I don't really think I don't think it's a solution to it, you know what I'm saying? And like man, you had a brief conversation about it. Like a lot of you know, we Muslim, you know what I'm saying? So our beliefs is different. Our way of looking at certain things. It's different from how a rat or average person will look at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you'll get somebody, you'll get somebody average to get on here and they'll probably come up with a hundred solutions of what we think we should do. Whereas though me, I'm gonna always look at it from an Islamic perspective. I look at all the chaos and everything that's going on and I resort back to the hadith. You know what I'm saying? I resort back to the hadith or with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke on when they when they asked him about the, the hour. When they asked him about the hour and he told him he don't have no knowledge of the hour, he don't know when it's going to happen. But he was revealed signs of what's going to happen during those times leading up to the hour approaching. And one of the one of the ones that he spoke on was killing. You know what I'm saying? He said killing would be on the increase. You know what I'm saying? And when you look at it, we we had 500 plus murders. We beat what we did last year. The killing is not slowing down. It's actually getting more, it's increasing every year. You know what I'm saying? So that right there alone lets me know, oh no, this decreed to happen. There's nothing we could do about this. This was going to go on because he said it. He said it hundreds of years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like thousands he, of years ago. Thousands yeah. of years ago, he said, you know, killing will be on the increase. The man will impersonate the woman. A woman will impersonate the man. We seeing more gay stuff. You can't even turn the TV on no more without seeing some homophobic activity. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, like it's, it's, it's really it's really bad, bro. You know what I'm saying? My problem with that stuff right there be, it was always people on TV, these two dudes and these two chicks. But all that meant was they wore sweaters and drunk wine. Now, you can't tell me that we need to have one of the characters in Frozen be a bisexual. Yeah. That Come Bert on. and Ernie got to be gay now. Like, Come on, you know this saying, is where bro. we draw. This is if you want to raise your kids, however you want to raise your kids, that's up to you. That's in your household, and I ain't got nothing to do with that. Unless you ask me my opinion, I won't never give it to you because they're your kids. You don't tell nobody what to do with their own kids. But you can't be putting it out there for everything. Like every situation can't be that. If an adult chooses to watch power and this is what's going on, this is what's going on. Same shit was going on on the wire. Like, yeah, but you're an adult and you're making those decisions. Don't put that shit in front of, like you said, your daughter is nine, my daughter is eight. Don't put that shit in front of them when they five and six. And now they're asking you all, they asking you all kinds of questions and shit that they don't even comprehend these answers that you got to give them. Yeah. It's like, bad. That's what you know what me with that shit. Um, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, they force feeding that. They really force feeding and stuffing it down our throat, like, to make us accept it. They want us not. to look at if it you, like there's nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? But if you catch those kids, like I said, they five, they six, and they seven, and you normalize it through their whole way of life, then this is just what it is. Yeah, they so not the going to look at it like something wrong. The same way, like, we talking about when, back when we was growing up, and ain't no, none of this shit is happening while the kids is going to school. These kids now, this shit has been happening my whole life. So now when the young boy is that of age, he's going to be like, well, fuck it. This shit it always was going on when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So why wouldn't I? Right. Like, it ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no rules type thing. Uh, the only thing that I can say shit that we could do here is just be the example for the ones that you can hit. Yeah. Uh, the ones, like I said, like my young boy, that young boy across the street from you that you know watching your every move, the one that always asks you about this, that, or whatever, even if it's small shit, if he asks you anything and engages in anything that's going on, like, try to give him something. Yeah. As far as not, like, yo, he go $15, $20 or whatever, give him some game. Give him something to aspire to. Try to help him get on the right path. But we got to do these in a case-by-case -case situation because it's like, yeah. you just got to attack what's right there in front of you can't yeah. worry about trying to get the whole city or the whole country regardless to which city you in because everybody you know this shit goes across the country to a bunch of different cities so yeah. i don't want everybody to hear this and just think about this shit in a philly perspective because you could think about these same yeah, things in it's, houston yeah, miami everywhere. or wherever the fuck you at yeah. like everywhere 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 yeah. is moving like that now you know what I'm saying? yeah it's problematic everywhere it's bad. Yeah, um, it's bad you know what I'm saying? but like you said i agree with you you know if you got a young boy one one out of the out of twenty, if it's one of them that's willing to sit and talk to you, pick your brain, and 
he might like your style or something, man. You know, go ahead and put your arm around him and try to like school him and try to try to lead him a different way. You know what I'm saying? If you can save one, I mean that's a, that's I mean that's a pat on the back. You know what I mean, if you, if you can save one, if you can save that yeah. one, it's a one, it's a blessing in that one. Cause yeah. maybe now you gave him something that he could pass on to the next one. Like and like I said, at this point, a thousand and two years, we too far going to try to reach everybody. Yeah. And it's sad to say that, but that's it, that just is what it is. Like shit, the shirt that I got on now is my brother, and this is the same situation. Like, but we gotta uh we gotta just reach the ones that we can reach. The ones yeah. that's right there in your immediate in your face type situation. Let's just try to make sure we can get them and hopefully we can turn out something good out of them. Cause this yeah. generation, like who knows? Yeah, it's this, it's generational and it's it's different. We don't understand it. You know, we older now, so we looking at it like these young boys out of pocket. And, you know, it was wild when I was young. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, you know, I came up in the hood. You know, I understand sometimes things go left. Sometimes it get a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it's just. It's a difference, like you just said. It's a different level. Like, it's, it's, it's a whole two thing, different. It's two things right there, like you just said. Shit was always wild. Yeah. But there was a time and place for wild. Like I said, yeah. when we was kids, it was. You know, don't walk through the park at a certain time. You know, don't make this right on 24th Street. You know, don't go to this little block. You knew that. Now it was like over there, you go over there, that's what you're looking for. Now on the quiet block where nothing is happening, it ain't no quiet block it's where nothing is happening. Go, yeah, it's live. You think you want to see kids on a bus stop coming home? There. Kids on a bus stop coming home in front of a daycare. You can't have a drive by right here. Like yeah. that's the issue. But, um, Obviously, this is something we're gonna keep talking about here on the How to Hustle podcast because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is something that just keeps happening. These discussions need to be had, and we're gonna keep having them. But now we're gonna switch up the show and talk a little bit about Fortman. We're gonna talk a little bit about Cree Forge. Do we got anything on the horizon? First of all, before I throw these uh, couple songs at you. Oh uh, man, uh, I ain't really doing far as music wise. I ain't really got too much going on. Uh, I popped out for a few features this year. I ain't dropped no project or nothing. I don't really, uh, I've been chilling. You know what I mean? As far as music, I've been chilling, man. I just been, you know, being Cree the man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just taking care of my family. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, doing things that need to be done. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm tending into that. But, uh, Forge 500 Incorporated, you know what I'm saying? My corporation. Uh, for people that might follow me on Instagram, you might see me posting my clothes and posting pictures of people wearing it and stuff like that. You know, that's just some merch. To promote my brand, to promote my company, you know what I'm saying it's not really a clothing line. I just like to consider it as merch. You know what I mean? So if you supported me as far as an artist, you know, you see what I got going on. I'm selling clothes here and there. Get with me and purchase something, you know what I'm saying? Show some love, you know what I mean? It don't stop that wait. music for me. Still waiting on my black hoodie to come through, but we'll talk about that yeah, I got, mic. I got, I got some new things <laughs> coming this week, you know what I'm saying? Tap, man, I got something coming this week, y'all. Uh, Copy that. Yeah. Um... All right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I had this conversation with somebody the other day where uh, two conversations. It was about uh, shout out to Two Kings Two One Five doing their podcast, and it was like your top five hustlers. And Ice Cube was one of them that I named in there because I'm like he was one of the first rappers who was like, "Fuck just being a rapper. I'm gonna yeah. be the producer, the writer. I'm gonna Let do other things that's going. I'm gonna do other things that's gonna get you to want the music." So shouts out to you for doing the, the Forge 500 shit. I wanted you to bring yeah. that up. I'm glad you did bring that up. And that's yeah. why I said yeah, I can talk shit about you getting my hoodie together. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I got a couple songs. Like I said, uh, Cree told me some off some shit off the mic and I told him we're not going for no retirement or none of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, need, we need you to keep you out there. He put on Twitter one night, I'm getting the itch to go to the stew. I hit him straight up and get your ass down there. Yeah. You know what yeah. <laughs> I'll be trying to find it, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I feel like I'm so detached from the music right now, like, because there's nothing that's moving me. And I never really, I never really depended on other artists to motivate me. I always rapped and spoke about what I wanted to talk about. I ain't really need too much motivation from nobody. But right now, it's just, like, rap is so corny to me, you know what I'm saying? And it don't, don't nothing make me want to even do it. Like, when I hear Dex and when I hear, you know, somebody like, like Ricky, I mean, Chase the Green or, they might drop something and I'll listen to it and I might it'll give me the little it's like, oh damn, I should have, I probably should have been on that joint. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, but what's that Ricky joint? It's the hardest shit in Philly since Mac with a Desi. That is my shit. Bro, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky, shout out to Ricky Chase the Green. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's a he's a project, he's a task project. Uh 
you know, product, you know what I'm saying? He's from, he's from the cut, you know what I'm saying? He's one of the gorillas and he, he carried it like that, you know what I'm saying? Ricky Nasty, a spitter. He always been a spitter since he was a young boy, man. And he really, he really pushing hard right now, man. So I encourage him and I support him 100%. All right, so look, since you brought Dex up, this is going to segue nicely into what I was about to do. I got a couple songs and I need you to talk to me about these songs. Yeah. And like I told you before, I've been Fortune Man since 02-ish. So sure. Letter to Dex on the first day of the mixtape. Yeah. Letter to Dex. Talk to me about that joint. Hey man, kind of self-explanatory if you heard. Yeah, it, you know, you... my man was he was in a situation. I mean, a lot of people that follow us, they know about Dex, they know his situation. Uh he was arrested, you know what I mean, for murder. Um and I, it was just me sitting in my joint. Like I was talking to him all the time on the phone and stuff, but you know, one night I was just sitting and I'm I was just writing. It just came to my mind like damn. Like I should write him a letter, but make it a rap. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up, I ended up pinning it and putting it together. And I spit it to him over the phone one day. He was like, "Damn, bro, you gotta drop that song." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I ended up, so I ended up putting it on the tape. I put it on the mixtape. You know what I mean, it was just, it was just me telling my, just you know, telling him stuff that he already knew, letting him know like he could, he could count on me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never gonna turn my back on him. I'm here with him, 100 percent going through it with him. You know what I'm saying? However the outcome go, I'm going to be here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to hold it down for you till you touch it back down. And my man ended up jumping on a deal. They offered him a deal for 10 and 20. He went up. Still doing it like a man. You know what I mean? Did 10. Came back home. He back out here. You know what I'm saying? That was probably that or the Dead End was my favorite two joints on that Dead End was legendary. Yeah, Dead End was legendary, man. You know what I'm saying? That shook the whole hood up. Like, everybody was just... Because I told our story. I mean, within that, however long the song was, I summed up the whole task right there in that song. You know what I'm saying? This is another one. This is a touch on what we've been talking about, too. Straight out of Philly. I know it was a million of y'all on that one. Which one was that? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. BL. Uh, shout out to BL. You, Miss J, ARN. Ready Rock, Garcy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, so there's a million of y'all on this joint. Yeah, yeah. You know, Forge carry how I carry, yo. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Copy that. That's right. You, you know, was I'm going to step hard when I step. You know I mean? For folks who was listening to the top five Philly rappers did that episode, and again, shout out to Two Kings 215. I did that one with Nah. Forge Man was on my list on that joint. For sure. Uh, for those people who hit me and said, damn, I ain't even know who Cumber of them was. That was the whole purpose of us doing that list, to shine the light right. on the niggas that I fucked with. Right. <laughs> It's still a you lot. Already, of people, it's still a lot of people still sleep on Fortune. You know what I'm saying, but you know, I look at it as even somebody never put you on, or I ain't work hard enough. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was bringing this one up because I ain't told you about this a thousand times. Do something to you. Do yeah. something to you is on more than music. Yeah. Storytelling. Your storytelling is always my shit. I should have shot a video for that record. You know what I'm saying? I can still. What do you mean you should have, bro? We can still. Do yeah, that. I still can. Yeah, I still can. But. uh it was just a fun record, you know what I mean? Because I know a lot of dudes. I got cousins. I got homies, you know what I mean? And everybody that, you know, tell me their stories when they going through something and all that. And it just made me, you know, put it together like, damn. I know a lot of dudes go through situations like that. I know even, not even just dudes, women. You know, it's women out here that's going through a, a situation like that. You know, so I just put it together and so people can hear it and be like, damn, like, yo, he hit it on the nose, man. Like, you uh, know what I mean? I got, an I got another one. Oh, I got another one for you for the ladies since, again, my man. See, this is why I fucks with your fortune. You segueing me all the way into what I'm getting yeah, to. Yeah. Home Wrecker. Oh, home Wrecker is my favorite. Home Wrecker is my, probably my favorite joint, Forge. Yeah, no, that's, I think that I always compare um, that and Lil Cuz because they like my two biggest stories. And mm -hmm. I think Lil Cuz, I think Lil Cuz was better, but only because what it was about. You know what I'm saying? Like, but Home record was like a challenge for me, you know, to make a, a female character and make it in my head and really, you know, put the whole storyline together and all that. Like, but it, it turned out it actually got a response from the people bigger Push than the I short thought. Dre gag, she got like, a yeah. short key. Like, <laughs> the, the response I got from that when I when that when that EP dropped, that was an automatic favorite of everybody. Like everybody was like, "Yo, that joint is crazy, man." And, I was trying to, I had an idea to do, to turn it like, I didn't want to do a video. I wanted to do like a short film with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and get some people to act it out, you know, and do, you know, bring it to life and give it life, man. But I was having a hard time finding a female that would play the chick. 
the couple a couple a couple females that I reached out to that that I wanted to try to do it, they all declined because they I guess they didn't want to play the chick with AIDS and all that. And I'm like, it's the acting, national highest like one of the was, hashtags, bro. You yeah, was big. supposed to this is an off mic conversation, bro. We can make we can make some yeah, calls. Yeah, yeah. We can make a few call few, few phone calls and try to make yeah. that situation. I'm still, happen, bro. I'm still open for it though, man. If I can find the right female that fit the character and she willing to do it, you know, I'll definitely uh push forward on it. I might got somebody in mind. Fortune might have something there. Yeah. Uh, we talk about that off mic, though. All right, this is the last one that I'm gonna ask you about. This is from To the Oils, but this one was titled More Than Music. Yeah. More Than Music off To the Oils. We're gonna close Legend. him out with that one. Legendary, you know what I'm saying? Legendary joint, man. Uh, y'all know me, man. I come from the heart, you know what I'm saying? That joint was just me just. Thinking about my past, thinking about coming up in the projects, thinking about my mother, all the things, all the sacrifices she made for us. And you know, especially Probably for when me. I seen the head to yeah. shoplift for King. Especially dudes. for me, because I was the only boy for a long time until my mom had uh my, my little brother, you know what I'm saying? But it was just me and my two sisters in the beginning. So I was the only boy. So my mom made certain sacrifices for me, like you know what I'm saying, that was special to me that I'll never forget. Like she knew that I, she she knew I was I always had pride. I mean, I always been an issue of mine, but my mom knew I always wanted the, the decent sneakers and I wanted to try to keep up with, you know, maybe a couple of my friends that had, but I was a little more fortunate than me, you know, might have had some joy, had the new Jordan fives or something on, you know what I mean? And my mom would do what she can to make sure I got them, even if it took the whole, you know, all the way up until Christmas for me to get them, you know what I'm saying? But she would make sure I got them drawers on my feet. You know what I'm saying? That's stuff like that that I would I will never forget. You know what I'm saying? I remember, I remember a time uh my sister, my older sister, wanted some sneakers. And my mom told her, You gotta wait. You know what I'm saying? You gotta wait. I'm gonna get them, you gotta wait, but you gotta get his first. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you know, that's just little stuff that I like. My mom, she tried her best to make sure, like, no, my son, he not going, you know, because I said to him one time, like, I don't want to be the dirty boy in school. Like, you know what I mean, I said that. I refused you know I mean? to be a dirty nigga. Yeah, like, and she, with the college you know, had the brains really, to be a I dirty think that nigga. struck her. I think that really struck a nerve in my mom. And, you know, she was just determined for me to not ever feel like I was the dirty kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I never, I never forget that. You know what I'm saying? Um, before we close out episode 48, one of them things that I really like to do, man, you again, we had a lot of off mic conversations. Right. But uh, I hate for a nigga to show up to your Janazza or the week that you died. Now they got a thousand pictures of you, and that was yeah. my man, and all. Yeah. He was the hottest nigga in the go. world. You got to die to be lit. You got to die exactly. to be lit now. I'm saying. This is why I told you, for me, from the 14 year old me in the ninth grade, listening to this shit on the two raw for the streets joints and all of that, going, yo, who this boy? This nigga is hot to be able to now just call you, hey, bro, look, I'm going to talk about this, that, or whatever. Sure. I wanted to give you them flowers and let you smell these joints, that I appreciate you coming on. You're definitely a legend in the city. And believe me, the niggas who are of our generation, all is still listening to that shit. For sure, for sure. I appreciate you, bro. You one of the few, man. You know, it's, it's a few guys that 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 never forget me. That always try to include me in anything they got going on. And I salute all of them. I ain't gonna say a name a thousand niggas, but you definitely one of them, bro. Like every time you uh got something going on, you jump right on my line. I mean, you keep me in mind all the time, and you not you never was you never was afraid to show me that. You was a fan first and foremost, and, and you really appreciate me and what I did, you know what I'm saying? So for that alone, when I first met you from that alone, I knew like, oh no, he's solid, I like this nigga. Like you never tried to front or when I came around, you never, like you know how when dudes, when, when dudes, you come around, niggas wanna be super cool. Like they niggas wanna be super you, cool, yeah. Yeah, they don't, they don't wanna show you that they fuck with you, but you really, they fit you, they favorite rapper, but they, they refuse to show you. Like you never gave me that. Like soon as I came around when I first did y'all podcast, you was like, "Hey, Forge, listen, man, you my god, nigga, you top five. Like you just showed me love, bro. When like, you first, like, the first time when you called the phone, you was like, "Yeah, this Forge, nigga, you think I don't know who this is? Yeah. Like, I'm like, come on, man, what are you doing? I yeah. same shit. Like, like I said, I like to give a nigga a fly. I like, like sure. this was the joint on the major figures joint back in the day. It was like, if you feeling a nigga, you say, damn, that nigga's nah, nice. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I met Spade, was my Spade was my favorite rapper. That's one of so my favorite I, rappers. Yeah. When I met Spade, I told him, bro, I was salty when you got booked because yeah. you was my favorite rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? Spade, man, that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? I got I a lot of respect for Spade. 
I'm working on Spado too. But mm -hmm. um, he around though. Not... Like if you reach out to him, he 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 with it, bro. Because he oh, he, no, he's what... super humble boy. He with it. Yeah, we did. Um, we had Spado on OLF too. You know what I'm saying? Shout mm -hmm. out to OLF. Uh, we had Spado shout on OLF. Shout out to the gang over there. Yeah, I made that uh, connection, and you already know. Once I get you, nigga, I'm on you. Mm -hmm. Um. But all right, y'all, that's episode 48. I appreciate y'all hitting the button. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.